I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Upper Chichester Board of Commissioners meeting, April 14th, 2022. George, can you do a roll call? Please? Sure. Commissioner Baco? Here. Commissioner Godioso? Here. Commissioner Murkowski? Here. Commissioner Neary? Here. Commissioner Whitaker? Here. Michael Pierce? Here. Lisa Catania? Here. And myself, George Needles, present. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to the uh, citizens' comments. We'll go. Um, by telephone uh, first, and then we'll go to the audience. Uh, anybody have a citizen comment by dialing 571-748-4021. That number again is 571-748-4021. And enter in the pin 357-1690 pound. And the pin is 357-1690 pound. To unmute your phone, press star six. Please state your name and address prior to making your public comment and telephone number if you want us to get back to you. We'll be given two minutes for any public comments uh, by phone. Make note there's no uh, public comment by phone. We'll go to the citizen comment in the audience tonight. Start with my left to, to the right of the room. Good evening. John Thornton, 712 Dutton Street, Upper Chichester. Speaking on behalf of the Upper Chichester Fire Department. This is an overview of our fire report for the month of March. Fire department responded to 80 calls for the month of March with no field responses, which is really good. We've already had two this month. Uh, daytimes continues to be our hardest time for volunteers to respond. That's something that we continue to try to work on to improve. Uh, notable calls, month of March, we had a fire at the Willbrook Apartments. Again, uh, Electrical, uh, small in nature, we were able to quick response and get that fire out before it escalated. Uh, March 24th, we had a detached garage fire, 500 block of Taylor Avenue, which was pretty much a uh, total loss for that garage and the contents. Uh, we've had two motor vehicles, accidents with entrapment. In March, uh, mutual aid alarms, we assisted Aston on uh, two working residential house fires. Lower Chichester, residential house fire. I was on Ridge Road during the daytime. Uh, we assisted Conquerville, the working commercial fire. It's at the car wash on 202. Uh, we also assisted the city of Chester on Tulum fire. That was a twin residential. Uh, let's see. March 25th, we took delivery of our uh, Sea Grave aerial scope that we had ordered. Uh, it's a 95 foot reach bucket um guys are currently now mounting and training on that truck as we speak uh we expect to 
have that truck in service probably late June, early July. You'll be seeing that truck around. I'm sure some of you have seen it. We got to get everybody's got to get minimal uh, driving trying uh, to operate it. So it's going to take time. But, uh, thank you. Thank you, John. Does anybody have any questions for the chief? Um, no, I just wanted to add to um, just to say a thank you to Upper Chai Fire Department and specifically the Ogden location for agreeing to take the um, to house the um, Darby Township fire trucks that we have that we need to house. So thank you for that. We are housing a, actually a couple of fire trucks. Uh, right. That's a empty base and, uh, and an open station. So yes, we're currently uh, holding a truck from Chester privately owned truck and two of them. But uh, one other thing I want to say, with our consolidation, we're just moving slowly along. We'll keep chopping away at it. Yeah. Any other questions? John, out of the 80 calls, were any of them ambulance calls or are they all fire? Uh, that's strictly fire. Okay. Um, EMS is, you know, that's, that's paid, so they keep their own records that they run over 2,000 calls a year, so they're pretty busy. It's only going to get busier. I mean, EMS is a tough ball game. Um, there's fewer and fewer ambulances, fewer and fewer AOS ambulances in town, and uh, there could be fewer coming up. We're not sure what's going to happen with Crozier and being bought out by Christiana, so yes. Thank you, John. Anybody else on the left side, my the right side in the room? Any comments on the right side? State your name and your address and your telephone number in case you want us to get back to you. Good evening, my name is Jeff Warner from 256 Meeting House Road. My number is 267-634-5487. I essentially have a question. I, I lived next to the car deals now for 21 years. It seemed to have an ongoing problem between us. Um, as of late, uh, Mr. Finley, who is apparently married into the family, has had problems with me and such. I've made and numerous reach out attempts by writing and or verbally talking with council officials in regards to some of the violations that Mr. Finley has, ongoing things that are going there, and I've had no response whatsoever. It's been total crickets. Uh, on the other hand, the township is seeming to uh, coming down rather hard on myself in regards to complaints that they've had. My, my question essentially is, am I ever going to hear from somebody in regards to my concerns at my property? For Mr. Finley or in regarding your... In regards, yes. What, what ongoing things, complaints that essentially that I have that Mr. Finley is I think ongoing building. There's a small patch of grass between our driveways that in 2018 I received a, site, a letter first about high weeds. I removed and the particular code enforcement officer that was taking pictures, I told him that day I would have the weeds cut at the street he was taking pictures. And I did that. I received a letter that it was weeds between the driveway. I cut all the weeds between the driveway and my side of the driveway. I then received a citation for a high weed. When I responded to the township, hey, what weed are we talking about? Because I cut all the weeds. I got nothing and I had to schedule a hearing. I went in on the hearing date and I was told, you don't have a hearing. It was withdrawn yesterday because you complied. Now that was 2018. Weeds have been growing up in that center strip. <laughs> been cutting and maintaining and then 2019 I got a, again a letter that I had high weeds between my drivers. So you're, now, say, you're saying that's Mr. Finley's patch of grass? Correct. I, I would assume there's like I said there's a dividing drive uh, or patch about four feet wide and big trees were planted down the property line from what he had told me when he talked to me and these weeds aren't cut but I I discovered that there's no letters written, no citations, no questioning or anything to Mr. Finley in regards to these things. And uh, he's been grading 
his property, putting things in. I made comment about the vegetation rotting in the fall that I get inundated with flies. I'm not one to complain about necessarily things going on because I live right at the railroad that carries gun. But high power on is 250 feet behind me and his farm there. But I feel I'm being focused on because of the things I enjoy in life to do because he's complaining. And then when I bring up, there's something going on there. It seems to be falling on deaf ears. So I just am asking the council. Is yeah, somebody going to look into this and maybe respond? Or? No, I'll, I'll get hold of the inspector tomorrow, or the manager can, and find out if there's any formal complaints from Mr. Finley. And we do, uh, just you know, we do respond to about three hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, three thousand complaints a year uh, in that department throughout the, the township. Um, out of those three thousand, we end up typically issuing about a thousand violations a year of things that there is a, a law against. Um, so one in three. So uh, that means that two out of every three calls are for something that maybe someone does not like. However, we can't find a law that we have that prevents them from doing those activities. I can tell you that in that vicinity of that area, we've received numerous calls. We do receive numerous calls for various properties in that area, and we do typically respond. Um, we typically do not engage conversations back and forth with the complainants unless they you know, request that they be uh, involved in the case. And, and that point of uh, talk to Mr. Pierce, but I believe that they become witnesses and things like that if we have to proceed forward, if we find a violation that can be taken through the court system. Well, to, to just shed a little light, at least from my perspective, uh, Mr. Finley called about property maintenance issues and such, and in 2019, a letter was written to me and we got four different letters, and they stated high weeds, and I beam my use as a curvature that in 2010 and 11, when the township filed an injunction against me, the Delaware County uh, Common Pleas Court just ruled against it. Um, disabled vehicles and junk and debris. I responded with a letter to him asking for clarification, saying, explaining the weeds were taken care of, such as in 2018. The, 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 Know exactly yes. what we're dealing with. I understand that. The problem with that, you can have your council contact. Well, you know, my, my, problem, my problem is, is that I reached out to you about violations I feel Mr. Finley's doing. He accused me of threatening to kill him last year. Okay. And I was called in to the, there was eight officers fully dressed in SWAT uniforms and M16s at my property to arrest me. And they didn't even ask me word one in the regards to the question. I've since been found innocent of those charges. And Mr. Finley now is being brought on charges of his threatening myself and my son. That's a criminal matter that the courts I understand that. But in other words, the township, I would think, would be concerned how things are escalating and have been ongoing here and maybe try and communicate with the parties involved in a reasonable and intelligent manner to resolve this because this is getting nowhere and it's escalating to a point. Mr. Finley sat there and screamed at one of your officers and the officer didn't want to say anything about it. Okay. I mean, um, so, I well, well, so. Yes. The, the, I'm not talking about my citation. Right. I'm talking about Understood. what I. And what council has indicated is they will check with the other enforcement officers to see what the status is. And I, and I do apologize, they are off tomorrow because of the that's holiday. It'll be the first thing next week. I don't expect to drop it right. on the no. But if I get a call or you know communication within we'll a week or out. so, that is perfectly fine. That's fine. I understand everybody has busy lives. Mm -hmm. I just would like to you know get some sort of okay. communication going. All right. Thank you very much. We right, thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. George, we have his number, right? There. Thank you. Any other any other citizens' comments? If not, we'll move on. I uh, need the approval of the minutes from March 3rd, 2022 Board of Commissioners Caucus meeting and the March 2nd, 2022 Board of Commissioners regular meeting. So, so moved. moved. Oh, I'll second. Um, and and there are, George, George, are there a number of corrections where they made? 
Sure. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those? The order. Okay, the next few will be read by Madam Vice President Nicole Whitaker, number six through ten. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Consider a motion appointing Derek Alston to the Southern Delaware County Authority for the second ward. Second. Uh, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Consider a resolution authorizing a grant application be made with the Pennsylvania Department of Community Economic Development, Greenways, Trails, and Recreation Program for improvements to the CBL ball fields, including the installation of a fitness trail, park amenities, stormwater management, and a parking lot. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Consider a motion granting a fee waiver to State Representative Brian Kirkland for a cancer awareness, awareness luncheon at the municipal building on April 29th 2022 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So order. Consider a motion granting a fee reduction to the Big Bounce of America for the rental of Fury Roads Fields 1 and 2 from August 31st to September 13th, 2022 to be collected in the amount of $8,400. Second. Any questions? Uh, I think this is our fields right down down below, correct? Correct. And how long did we use it for? From August 31st through September 13th, so look look about two weeks. And, and they have the insurance, right, George? All that. Any damage to the fields would be correct. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. So order. Consider a motion agreeing to the. Yes, Sorry about that. Huh? I didn't know if that I was a no or what. What? It was for it. I oh, he opposed. You yeah, opposed. One opposed. One yes. opposed. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Consider a motion agreeing to the terms of the first addendum to lease agreement with Chichester School District to extend the terms of the current lease agreement until March 30th, 2023 for the property known as the Ogden Schoolhouse. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Uh, I have to leave for one moment. What, what's that? He had to leave for a minute. Oh, okay, sorry about okay. that. Okay. Did we, we vote it right? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So right, ordered. <laughs> okay. I'll be right, right there. there. Right. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. Sorry about that. So, hold, hold on. Hold on one second, please. Can can you keep the noise down, though, please? We watching that Phillies game. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I, I a nurse called out, which is why I'm not at the meeting. And a new nurse is coming in, and I had to greet him at the door. I apologize for the, the for the noise. You're fine. It's fine. You're Joe. fine. Joe. We're Go good. Ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Con consider a motion ratifying the employment agreement with Marco Benelli for the position of Director of Finance with the Upper Chichester Township. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Consider a motion appointing Marco Benelli as the Township Treasurer. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Consider a motion appointing George Needles as the Deputy Township Treasurer, so moved. Second. Did you get demoted, George? Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> so ordered. Consider a motion ratifying the contract with Semperion for a Township phone system, so moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So order. Consider a motion approving the list of bills in the amount of eight hundred and seventy nine thousand three hundred and forty four dollars and ninety cents. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. So order. 
Uh, finally, consider a motion approving the trash refund list 4-2022. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So ordered. From number 17 to 21, Commissioner Gaudio. So. Thank you. I'd like to consider a resolution conditionally improving the re reverse sub division application submitted by Boothman Fire Company, number one, located at 1405 Meeting House Road. Second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. Consider a motion granting MIPC LLC a waiver from the Township Stormwater Management Ordinance codified in Chapter 490 of the Upper Chichester Township Code of Ordinances for their pipeline replacement project. Second. Any questions? I just want to make a statement. They were here last week with the presentation, the pipeline, and uh, people could review the minutes or the meeting from last week. Uh, for this waiver that they were asking for. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Sorry about that. That's okay. Did we um did they get anywhere regarding CSX? Have they been able to make any progress there? I put them in touch with Rodney and we are waiting to hear back on the results of that. Okay. All right, thank you. Mr. President, I should also mention that there is a a fee in lieu. Uh, right. Storm water with this waiver. That is correct. Right. Thank you. Um, we'll move on. Yes. Consider a motion authorize the township manager to make all necessary actions as the petitioner against 1901 Huddle Avenue and its owners in the court under Pennsylvania Act 135. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so order. The board consider a motion authorizing the township professionals to prepare and advertise an ordinance amending the township zoning map. Second. When we uh, advertise this map, George, is this all the locations that the commissioners would have issues in each ward, or is it just certain, certain areas at this time right now? So, uh, Tonight we're asking for both the prepare and to advertise in hopes that we would have uh, be able to meet with the planner, the engineer, myself, and each of the individual commissioners prior to the next meeting so we can kind of get the advertising scheduled down. Okay. That's just the start of it. We're not until we get the locations. Or yeah, this would be to hone in all the locations that we kind of, we have a running list, but this would be to kind of get everything out there. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. And lastly, can we, can we have the board consider a motion accepting the proposal from Brightview Landscape LLC in the amount of $19,797.00 for the work to be completed in the Creekside development and furthermore authorize the township treasurer to debit the escrow account of Costa Homes and furthermore authorize the township solicitor to take any steps necessary to recoup any amount spent over and above the escrow from Costa Homes. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Number 22 through, and this, it's all yours, Joe, 22 to 26. Commissioner Biaco. Consider a motion approving the expenditure for the emergency repair of the main water line at the municipal building with more construction services incorporated. A co stars vendor in the amount of 41,997. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. Consider a motion awarding the Somerset Drainage Improvement Project. To JNS Paving and Excavating Corporation in the amount of $123,752. Second. Any questions? Uh, do we start? I know we talked about this with the ARPA money and stuff or how we're going to do it out of our capital improvements. 
and vice versa. Do we have to start any of this process for any of this? This project was budgeted in the capital project budget for the year. So. Okay. Okay. Do we do we know JNS? Do we know them? I did not. I had to do a little bit of research to make sure that they've done work similar to this. Work. We should be good. They've actually worked quite a bit with Falcon Engineering. Okay. Who did actually did the design for this project? Gotcha. Okay. Some big municipalities up in Montgomery County as well, which is kind of where Falcon is located. Okay, okay, good. They sound similar to another company, and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> let's make sure. So, okay. Any other questions? Not all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Consider a motion approving payment number four in the amount of 46217 to Premier Concrete Incorporated for the Chichester Avenue Streetscape project. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Consider a motion accepting change order number one from Premier Concrete Incorporated for project number CDBG number 44-45A, Chichester Avenue Streetscape, a decrease in the amount of $326. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. So we're going to big money back. So <laughs> I think I did 20. Consider a resolution. Consider a resolution ratifying an escrow release process on April 20th, 2021 for Chester Water Authority in the amount of 15,122. Oh, so, so moved. Second, second in his second. mic. Yeah. George, we find out, or are they back there again, or what? The only reason I said I saw all the equipment there prior to this res this coming to us. Yeah, there, it looks like there's a leak out on uh, right at Chai where you come into the development. Oh, okay. So they're going to be cutting out some work there. Okay. Do we have to hold any of this for that, or no, or is this really just a repair? This was previously released to them for that other project. Okay. Any other questions? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. So ordered. Uh, that would do it for Mr. Biacco. Myself now I have one. Uh, Nicole, you want to read it for me? Sure. Consider a resolution authorizing application be made with the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission for the Transportation and Community Development Initiative Program. Second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. No. We're moving along to the commissioner's reports. I'm going to start out with Madam Vice President Nicole Whitaker. Um, again, not too much going on this Saturday. We are having the um, annual Easter egg event here at the township in conjunction with um, the church. And it's going to be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So please make sure you bring the children out. We're hoping for good weather. I'm not sure. I think Saturday is supposed to be okay. Um, if it's not, we'll bring it indoors, but otherwise it'll be outside. So it should be a, a good event. We have over 50 volunteers between the township and the church. So um, it should be a fun day. Come out, hang out for a little bit. Um, that's all I have. Anything to be brought to the attention of Commissioner Whitaker? Uh, I do, well, for my report, I do have something else. Um, Chief, I can ask you. Um, and, and or George, the tractor trailers at 452, the old meeting house. What, do we have any updates on that? And I would just also just like some more clarity on the building is abandoned. So is it that anyone can park there or is it like, I just, I just need to, to be able to explain to residents why those trucks are not being moved. So, um, it's a pretty convoluted explanation, unfortunately. Okay. But uh, we have been uh, leaving a letter on some of the trucks as we see them there. It's a bright orange letter that explains what violations there are. Uh, under our zoning code, basically what's happening there is that there's about six different violations that are happening. However, they all pertain to the owner of the property. 
And at this point, we cannot get a hold of the owner of the property. I did have a conversation slightly with the lawyer the other day about um, they were calling representing the mortgage holder of the property, asking about various fees owed to it. Um, so we were hoping that these letters would, with the here's all the potential things that could happen would stave people off. But I drove by yesterday and there's two sitting there still. So it's really not working. So I think it, Mike, we're going to have to sit down and look for what's our. Okay, thank you. Or, or, Mr. Pierce, are we allowed to put barricades up since this is abandoned property? It's not somebody that owns it, they have an interest. In and also, do we know what's going on with the BP? Because I know we talked about that last week as far as that backhoe that's sitting there with nothing happening. It, it's in a different position. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can answer that to some degree. Okay. They were supposed to, uh, by the end of the week, have that demobilized. Now, I'm not sure what happened, whether it was the weather that staved them off, but it, according to Bill Gavin, it was it was to be removed, demobilized uh, this week. The, the backhoe was supposed the to be back removed? The excavator, yes. That's, okay. it's, in a, it's in a different position now. I so every, everything is removed that they were taken out? Every, everything they've been whatever. permitted for at this it's point small. has been removed. So, so we still have that one the building. The tanks, the canopy, um, and so the buildings are still remaining. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Can we get the lights? How can we push the lights in the parking lot since it's pitch dark there? They were on at least two of them, one on each side. Right. We had them. We, they they were them. at one time. Now they're. Bill did Can reach out and ask them to do one of two things, either leave the fence up, which that's the contractor, so we didn't think that was going to happen, or leave a light on so that it was brighter in that corner. Mm, there we are. And I, nothing's happened as of yet. Okay. Thank you. Anything else for Commissioner Whitaker? We'll move along to Commissioner Joe Neary. Thank you, everybody. Um, the financial reports are available in the in, in the book and also in your uh, at the township office for review. The tax collector's monthly report uh, to our taxing district is available. Um, I, I really appreciate that report. Um, also, the uh, list of um, the township exonerations. The police report is available um, at the office. And I just wanted to uh, comment on the uh, civil service uh, status. Uh, the writtens, the orals, and the agility tests have all been taken and completed, and the process is moving ahead, and we'll probably be uh, getting some recommendations in the short term. Um, everything else is um, in order, and I do appreciate everybody's support for the uh, work that has to be done at Creekside. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Anything to be brought to the attention, Commissioner Neary? Now we'll move along to Commissioner Mike Gordioso. Thank you. Um, all my reports are on file. Um, if anybody's interested in stopping at the office and looking at them. Uh, reported almost on everything last week. Just have just a couple highlights that I'd like to go over. Um, once again, the trash along the 322. Hopefully we can reach out to the state to um, get that clean up. The, the home, the for sale sign um, in front of Kate's Glen, um, the, old, the old sign. Uh, that is starting to come apart, so I'm hoping that we can get that down soon. And at the corner of Bethel and Larkin Road, there is a shopping cart in the in an in a open parcel field that's undeveloped. I'll be stopping down to the township tomorrow to see how we can get that removed also. Um, other than that, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Easter, and um, hope everybody has a very nice time with their families, and I'll see everybody next month. Anything to be brought to the attention of Commissioner Gaudio, so if not, we'll move along to third ward. We'll be Thank you. Um, just wanted to check that we talked last week about the uh, full-time and part-time hires. Um, we put that advertisement out next week. With uh, Jim Putman this morning, we're going to have that out Monday morning. We uh, we got the, the job descriptions from them, did a little bit of vetting of that, and then we'll have it posted. We're posting for a seasonal part-time and a full-time position. That's all I'll ask for up to five. That's the most we've ever used. We may not use that, but just so we don't have to vote on it again. Is that fine? Fine, okay. Thanks, sir. Um, 
the, the track the track routes uh i think we have come up with a final route we're real close and as soon as we decide if that's what we want to go with i'll, I'll present it to you all i mean i don't know if you just want to have a uh, like come in and meet with us or just go with what what we come up with or come in I think he, I mean, we're not, we all can't get together at one time or whatever, but Puck could reach out to each, each one okay. of us. It's all, it's almost like what Mr. Neary was doing with the firemen and the incentive. It, it's the first step. It, it, it may be a little hiccup. I mean, they may have to go back to the drawing table and say, Hey, but it's going to be a change. Yeah. And we, we need to have the answers for the residents because changes some, people's days are, or some trash days may be a little change but it's not that we're not picking up the trash or the big trash still and then recycling so i don't i don't know what it is i like to know it just to say it and so they could mm -hmm. proceed on so are we down to deciding between two routes two different routes or or what, what are pretty much they'll be recycling every week but it won't be yours will still be collected every other week. We're gonna we're gonna have less trucks on the road. Gotcha. Okay. You know what I mean? Where the guys that usually do the recycling will probably be with, with the highway right. full time. Right. More constructive stuff. So I think that when is the implementation date? When are we looking That's to start? That's one of the things we're still discussing. Okay. And how to how to make all the residents aware. Right. So that was that was going to be my next point yes. is I think that we should definitely um, obviously sit down as a board, um, but also have it public meetings so that and advertise the routes and how that should be done. So we should definitely advertise that and have the meetings, you know, live streamed on you know Facebook or wherever we're going to post it for people that can't be here. But that's a big change. And yes. um, we definitely need to get ahead of it. Yeah, we think the most, I mean, the communication is going to be key, but probably the most effective way is uh, some type of, uh, you know, a door hanger or sticker mm -hmm. that tells people what their new trash day would be. Right. Um, the, when they, when they recalculated the routes for efficiency, a large portion of the people will have a new trash day. So it's going to change for the majority of, of the township. Um, but we're, we're, we're vetting out a couple of little things just to ensure that, we don't want to have to go back to the drawing board and say this didn't work because right. that's a huge change to have to go back to. So we want to absolutely make sure from a, in looking at it in an eight hour day, is this, is this realistic that this could happen 99% of the times with the crew that we currently have mm -hmm. and the staff. And then we will have an outreach strategy where we'll, we'll have social media meetings and, and, you know, door knockers and all that. Uh, you know, we, we would like, depending on, when we can get this all finalized, we we initially published a trash schedule through the end of June. Mm -hmm. So ideally, uh, it would be picking up July first. However, we need to know if that time frame is realistic based off of the information from the consultant. All right. So is the consultant also assisting in the process of deciding which route is best? Because yeah. I know they did the work, but are they helping to do he this part? Much gave options. Okay. okay. So you're looking at one of the options that he gave. Yeah. And, yeah. and we suggested some fine tuning to that. And, you know, and it's been, they cooperated together. Right. But so he's still, the consultant is still involved. Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. The only, the only thing is, like you were saying, with all the meetings with the public, our heavy months are the summertime because everybody's barbecuing and cooking and cleaning. People and are that. away. You so mean they're empty you meetings. may be unfortunately mm -hmm. implement in September, but at least get it ready. So September 1st or whatever, is, we're ready for it. And something else we have to work on too. Our guys go away and stuff too. Our right. vacation weeks, we gotta make sure. Right. It's not gonna, you know, put us in the Yeah, that's. Okay. Okay. Kinda got the wrap we want, but we're making sure things go with that. That explains it pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing I wanted to touch on is um, I think we all got the email from George about the uh, brake retarders on that stretch of 322. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I had a certain resident in that area and we got it this time. I know when Michael went for it, we were denied, but it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? And I like uh, I think Craig Williams also had a lot to do with that, I think. But I'll say thank you to them. Question based off of the conversation and what's happening is that if you have any other that you wanted to explore, this would be the time to explore them. So please send them in. Do, do we still have the list from Namens Creek Road? And what was the other one, like Chai Avenue somewhere? Uh, I forget what the other one was at. Well, uh, I'm going to resend the, the, the old one, list, the, but if there was yeah. anything else you were thinking at this time, you should probably send it in. I want to send a, a portion of Chai Avenue right before you get to our entrance down the hill and trucks. I'm just giving it to you right now. Yeah, try, yeah, try to get them in as soon as possible because I know the list we came in, they gave us a completely different street. It's like, okay. <laughs> so, I guess, uh, I guess it would be from Chelsea to Fjord to, oh, I would say to Lark. You know what I mean? No, just to echo what, Je what Commissioner Bach was saying, uh, I, I did call Craig Willing's office also, and they, they said that they would take a second look at it, and they were able to get it done. So I'd just like, like to say thank you to his staff and to um, Craig Williams also. So thank you. Anything else, Joe? Anything to be brought to the attention of Commissioner Biacco? If not, I'll do my report. Uh, I apologize on the report I do have. I didn't do have the fire marshals, but I just got it tonight, so we'll put it in your packet tonight. Uh, I send it to George. We can make copies before we leave. Uh, so we have it. The medic unit, I did not get a copy of that this time, which is unusual. Uh, emergency management's always in there. Uh, they've been pretty busy. They won't meet until June, I think it is. They have a month off. Uh, but on the other note, what the chief was saying, I don't see the chief here, that uh, that medic unit is busy. That medic unit is averaging seven to 10 calls per day. And it's 80% uh, probably are in, in Upper Chichester, so they are continuous busy. They're, the new medic unit's back. They're, they're waiting for that to be certified by the state. Every unit you have has to be certified as on, as a medic unit has to be certified by the state. So once that's done, the, uh, the rental vehicle will go back and they'll have their two ambulances in service and they'll alternate them back. But uh, they've been doing a hell of a job. I think the uh, the bump up, we, we helped them with the payroll for the full-timers and putting full-timers on has helped them out tremendously. Uh, it's other little hiccups that they could try to get together in, in their own. and. Um, with maybe a medic car by itself as a, like they were saying with the outside community service with Luther Knowles in uh, 808 Conchester that they're always there constantly. Um, but they do a phenomenal job. And yes, some of those calls at the fire department is, is a medic assist for lifting. So, I, but not, I think he, the chief was saying they had 80 calls the last month, maybe, 10%, eight of them might have been the healthy medic unit. Uh, most of the time it's accidents at the medic units or the building fires that they all respond on. So, but they have been busy. So is there anything else for mine? And thank everybody with this grant. Hopefully the grant goes in on time on April 27th and we're approved for the Booth One Town Center because we still have the issue on Blue Ball Avenue with tractor trailers making left-hand turns from Chai Avenue to Blue Ball. So. We'll have to make a phone call next week to PennDOT to work on that also. Um, other than that, uh, George, everything okay with uh, planning and zoning for the next class? Uh, we put that email out to them. I know Pam said something. She got an email. But yeah, I the, know uh, the, I mean, the, eventually I'd like to sit down with the board and figure out how we want to do this. Uh, the only thing is the uh, individuals of the planning commission, the zoning uh, zoning hearing board with these training classes have been ask, asking to independently be able to take them from home. So yeah, every time we do that, there's a single cost for each class for each person. So I just want to get some clarification eventually as to how we want to manage that budget because we could pay a fee of $100 and host it here and they could all attend right. or we can pay $1,000 for the 10 of them to each individually take it. So I think we just need to flush that out, how we want to make sure we spend the money on that. But uh, yeah, they're, they're the 20th, a uh, couple of them have signed up for that class. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes. I have a question. The reports, do they, they're not emailed to us? 
Because uh, you said you just got the one no, this evening. The, yeah, I just got the one tonight from the fire marshal. That report is, and I usually email it to George. He makes copies for your packets, but I can forward it over to everybody for that one. The medics, they give us the report of uh, the breakdown of the monthly calls. Right. So my and, question is, why don't they just email it to George? He does. They do. It goes to him and me. And okay. then George just... Gotcha. But we just got the uh, fire marshal tonight. The uh, emergency management, he's the first in the month that's always there. Okay. The medic, it's the first time in, in a minute that we've never received one for that. So we'll get okay. that by Monday. So anything to be brought to the attention of the, myself? Now we'll move to Mr. or manager before I go to the professionals real quick. All reports are on file, and the uh, township offices are closed tomorrow for Good Friday. Oh. Happy Easter, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we'll move to our professionals, uh, or engineer, Lisa Katan. Thank you. I did go through my, port, my report um, pretty thoroughly. Just wanted to advise that the AutoZone has started their punch list work, uh, so they'll be working until they, they close that punch list out. I've got a, a Dunkin' Donuts plan that I believe we should be getting ready for recording shortly. So that, that's a positive thing. I also uh, just wanted to mention that, that we do have a, the community development block grant where you did the change order this evening. We do have a final invoice for that project. That project will be closed out. So any of the scope of work that was part of the community development block grant that we received for Chichester Avenue, uh, we will be sending a, an application in in the amount of $73,818.30. That's the community development block grant. We'll continue with the second phase. The second phase of that streetscape work is with PennDOT currently uh, in review. Uh, otherwise, I can report general progress or answer any questions. How are we on a road program? Ready to go out? Or the road is program list? is on PEDBIN as of Monday morning. Okay. So we're, we're good with that. All right. That's good. Anything to be brought to the attention, Engineer? Now we'll move to our solicitor, Mike Pierce. Thank you so much, Mr. President. We went over my written report. <clears throat> Uh, in detail last week at this time uh, all the action items that we needed from my end were taken care of and everything else is in order not to move forward. anything to be brought to the attention as solicitor if not happy easter every resident happy easter everybody in the room here tonight need a motion to adjourn uh, can i just say one thing ed sure uh -oh. okay um, I went, uh, Wawa had its 58th birthday uh, celebration today up at the uh, newest Wawa. It was a very nice, it was very well attended. It was a, a very nice presentation. They donated uh, a whole lot of money to a whole lot of uh, organizations in the county. And uh, they, I spoke to the real estate person at one point, and they were certainly appreciative of the support of the Board of Commissioners. Um, for getting that property developed as relatively quickly as it was. So I wanted to convey that to everybody. Thank you. Joe, did they give any money to the library? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> well, they, they at our last library meeting, that was announced, Nicole, that they hadn't given it to us. Uh, that was the grant. Yes, they did not give us any grant money, but I'm saying you said that they had another event and they were giving out money. So I just wanted it, to note that no. for the record that they did again did not give the library any money. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I want to thank Joe. He was. Uh, I wanted to make it myself, but it did. It did honor also the Special Olympics. Uh, there was a few Special Olympic participants that were always there. They had their medals on and the pictures and all that stuff and. Uh, they did present them. I don't know if the Special Olympics even got any money, to be honest. But they were, yes, they did. Okay, I wasn't sure. I would. So cause, they got a million dollars, I believe. For the yeah, for the whole group. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, I, I asked the wife. Maybe she'll get in that. But now she's on the Special Olympics too. They've been doing the bowling for ten years now, so they were all happy to be there. So, matter of fact, they hired a few of them or one one girl in there. 
Uh, so, but it was a nice event. I, I wasn't able to attend it, but I'm glad Joe was there, and I'm glad my wife and the other participants were there. So maybe we could get in on a, a picture of it because I know I have a picture. So, other than that, happy Easter. We need a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Out of here.